Like many photographers, especially film photographers, I lust for the next camera that could be the perfect fit for me. Because of this, I've used a good amount of cameras, but think I've found a combination that fits me almost perfectly. So today, I'll be taking you through that. However, I figured I would include all of the cameras in our house as my roommates have quite the collection as well. Let's go. Okay, so we'll go through my personal collection first, just for ease. If we go chronologically through mine, we have the Olympus OM-10 first. Not a whole lot to be said about this simple 35mm SLR, to be honest. It's as straightforward as it gets. A classic camera that held my hand and introduced me to film photography while not bogging itself down with too much control or complication. A wonderful beginner's camera, and one I hope to give to my niece or nephew one day to introduce them into film photography. Next, the Contax T2. Although we skip any cameras in between, the Mamiya 645 being the most notable, I love my two sets of the 645 that I did have. But those are long gone, so let's talk about the Contax. While the T2 might be quite inflated, I still think the camera is uniquely spectacular. With its tiny form factor and crazy sharp Zeiss f2.8 lens, it's the perfect professional yet still pocketable 35mm camera. I like to think of it as the perfect daily shooter camera, or if I wanted to shoot photos on tour or on set, but look low key or undercover. While I don't really have a super, super specific use for it at this time, I like to think that in the very, very near future, once COVID cools its jets, that I will be able to use it for its intended purposes. Next up is my favorite camera of all time, the Mamiya 7. This camera was the grail for me to be honest. When I had started getting into medium format, I found out about the Mamiya 6x6 and 6x7 and just instantly fell in love. Again, the form factor while still being able to shoot 6x7 negatives was such a huge selling point to me. When I had first purchased the camera about a year ago, I actually had never used a rangefinder before. Well, I shouldn't say that. I would used one at that point, but never owned a rangefinder, so jumping over $2,000 into one was kind of nerve wracking. Despite this, it's easily my favorite camera I've ever shot. It's just really satisfying and fun to shoot in general, which makes you want to shoot with it more. The sounds, the engineering, the feeling of it in your hand is great. Additionally, the set of lenses are legendary, which I can attest to with their tack sharpness with my f4 65mm. Alright, and last up for me, the Mamiya RB67. This is my most recently acquired camera and kind of fills the void that was missing prior to having this camera. A main portrait camera. While the Contax and Mamiya 7 handle landscapes with ease, both are not super ideal for tight portraits, which happens to be the strong suit of the RB67. With its bellow focusing system, the RB allows you to focus incredibly close on extreme close-up portraits or macro shots. On mine, I have a 90mm f3.8, which I've really enjoyed so far and has great bokeh still despite being a more, a more budget-friendly lens. While it is quite a bit larger than the other cameras, I really, really like using the RB. It is the epitome of a robust mechanical camera, and it definitely reminds you of that. Okay, and last, I do have the SX-70, which I'm not going to bring up, except this photo. That's it. Alright, next up is John and his collection. First for him is his Bronica GS1. John has owned this beast for over two years now and with good reason. Bronica makes tons of budget-friendly, professional-grade cameras that are slept on in general. From intimate portraits to epic landscapes, the GS1 continues to prove why it's such an underdog in the medium format game. We've made a couple videos on this if you want to check out more. Stepping out of medium format and into 35mm, we have John's F2 and F3, the twins. Both of these, in my opinion, and I think John would agree, are Nikon at its best. The F2 being the fully mechanical predecessor of the F3, a battery-powered, more advanced version. John loves being able to shoot wide on one and tight on the other, or black and white on one and color on the other. He loves the flexibility the Nikon F2 and F3 give him, especially when coupled together in tandem. Lastly, John's newly acquired 4x5 camera a Burke and James Press 4x5. 
For all of us in the house, Large Foreman is a whole new adventure that we're just starting to dabble into, with Johnny being the first. John just recently got this camera after looking at them for a couple months on eBay, deciding this was an appropriate camera to learn on. In a way, the Burke and James Press 4x5 was a cross between a press camera and a much more technical large format camera. While he hasn't shot a ton on it yet, he's hoping to create some of his best work and huge prints for people in the future. Next, Colin's small and humble collection. His first camera, the AE-1, mirrors my Olympus OM-10 in terms of its impact to our friend group. Colin and I both got this AE-1 and the OM-10 in January of 2017, which was our catalyst that changed my point of view about photography forever. Now, obviously the camera is overhyped and I would have a tough time encouraging someone to pick it up as a first camera nowadays, but considering he got it for $50, it's been an amazing camera for him. Next up, his medium format Beast, which he's actually currently selling, the Pentax 6.7. He's on the hunt for a smaller 6x7 camera, perhaps the Fuji 6x7, but nothing solidified yet. When looking for a medium format camera, Colin really wanted a familiar form factor, so he went with the legendary SLR. Despite him wanting to get rid of it, he's taken some of his best work on this camera, and I think he's going to regret selling it in all honesty. Equipped with a 105mm lens, the camera has yet to disappoint. Well, except for how big it is. Colin hates that. Okay, last up for Colin, and I really only want to mention this solely for flex points, the Leica M6. So Colin actually has sold this, and we never got to make a video about it. We never did make a video because with it being such a street camera, shooting it in a street setting felt most appropriate, but that time had sadly never come. Regardless, this camera has a very short legacy with Colin, but I'm hopeful it will make a return to the channel. Next up, Parker and his Soviet Kiev 60 camera. The Kiev 60 features a soft, supple, custom red leather that wraps the entire body of the camera. When looking into medium format cameras, Parker agreed with Colin that an SLR was important to them for the familiarity of the camera. Additionally, knowing Parker, he wanted something unique, and the Kiev 60 is definitely that. Alright, last but certainly not least, we have Dave's cameras. So first out of Dave's cameras, we have his 3D cameras, as Dave is the 3D god. The Nishika N8000 and the Nimslo are extremely similar and do basically the same thing, but deliver two very different products while shooting. Both are 3D cameras, which means they have four lenses capturing four photos at the same time. In post, you stitch them together to create a cohesive, caught-in-the-moment type photo. Between the two, the Nishika being the cheaper, more popular, shittier of the two to be honest, whereas the Nimslo is less plasticky, is more consistent and takes much more sharper photos. Not much else to be said about these as they're pretty straightforward and if you're looking to get a 3D camera, definitely be getting a Nimslo over the Nishika and never get one of those three lens 3D cameras. Next up is Dave's other camera, the Canon AE-1. This one is actually from his mother from her glory days in college and was passed on to him in uh, the past year or two. Taken mostly on trips around the state and country, Dave likes capturing landscapes with said camera, providing a great control group of images that offer variety to his plethora of 3D GIFs. While he doesn't shoot a ton on this camera, he continuously surprises me with the photos he gets when he goes and travels with this camera solidifying his place in the household. Alright, so that's going to do it for our collection, guys. Let me know in the comments which of these have you all used, which of these is your favorite, and which of these in the future would you like to see more videos on. Until next time, guys, peace out.